Hey what's going on guys, Poor X Designs here and welcome to another 3D Studio Max tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you the ultimate uh, V-Ray uh, you know, quality plus speed render setup that you can use in your renders to make your renders look really really cool. So you, you've seen that recently I uploaded quite a lot of speed arts, speed models I guess of the MacBook Air, the iPad and all that stuff. So it had really cool lighting according to some of, the, some of my uh, comments. Uh, they really appreciate the final render. So I decided why not make a video tutorial uh, showing you what render settings I used and what was my scene setup and all that cool stuff. So right in front of you, uh, you can see my uh, McLaren AP4 model that I rendered out using quite, you know, quite the same render settings, but uh, uh, you know, a completely different, uh, you know, uh, scene setup. So um, there are basically two or uh, three. Uh, basic me you know uh, studio setup so one of them is you can see right here that's, that's very good for cars and other you know very high poly and very detailed models that this this method really looks good and it also looks good on really reflective models like the, the car paint you see here uh, however the studio that I'm gonna be uh, you know telling you is quite universal you can, I mean you can use it anywhere you want to so uh, yeah, that's that, that's what we're gonna be doing today. And after that, after the studio setup, which is gonna be just about you know five to six minutes, I'm just gonna be showing you all of my render setup. Uh, I'm using V-Ray, uh, by the way. So to all of you who didn't read the title description, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and start right away. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up a model, and I'll return when it's opened. All right. So right in front of you, I have my uh, iMac model. And um, you know, I just opened it up, and what I did was a model, uh, you know, group the entire model into one group, and I named that iMac. So that's easier to manipulate and you know, move around and all that stuff, because you you will be doing it in the plane render. So the general method of doing this is going inside of my create panel, and under standard primitives, you want to change this drop down menu to extended primitives, and you want to choose chamfer box. Now in the top viewport, you want to create a chamfer box. That, that's you know kind of larger than your model so I'm just make it real big and also make it pretty high and when, you, when it comes to giving it the you know the, the curve make sure you don't give it too much curve or too less curve just you know kind of like the uh, moderate kind of stuff here and that much should do pretty well okay so uh, as you can see from the left viewport it is not sufficiently wide enough so I'm just gonna increase the width I guess no that's not the width that's the height. No, that's the length. Okay, that, that's strange. Anyways, uh, I'm just gonna move it down here. Okay, and using the left viewport, I'm gonna hit F3 to, in, uh, you know, engage my wireframe mode. And using that mode, I'm just gonna make the model sit on this chamfer box. Okay. All right. So back into my perspective view, I'm just gonna, in, you know, zoom inside of this chamfer box. Okay. And now I can see my model sitting right there. Now what you can do to uh, you know make this uh, you know kind of easier to work with is go ahead and delete these well, you know side polygons from there. You know this just makes it easier to work with. So I'm just gonna right click and hit convert editable, editable poly. And using the polygon selection mode, I'm gonna select any one of these polygons, holding down shift, select the next polygon, and that selects the entire ring. And then just go ahead and deselect the top and bottom polygons and hit delete. So that just allows us to you know work with this a little more easier. You could also, you know, go ahead and delete these faces from here, but I'm not going to be doing that. So uh, we, we're just going to zoom in here, and if you think that the, this is, you know, not enough space, that's it's not giving you enough space. First thing you can do is you know, go ahead and move it forward, and that's that really does help a lot. Okay, now go ahead and create a camera. Okay, so you know, uh, I'm going to go ahead and you know zoom in and just kind of, kind of find the right position. For uh, for my model, so I'm just gonna zoom out just a touch here. I think that's a cool looking position. I'm gonna hit Control C, and that's gonna create a camera. But that's gonna create a standard cam camera, and that's not what we want. We want a, a V-Ray physical camera for this. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a camera. Go to V-Ray, and V-Ray physical camera. I'm just gonna create a camera anywhere in this thing. Doesn't really matter. Now, select the V-Ray camera, and using the Align tool that you see here, I'm just gonna click on that. And then click on the camera button, uh, the camera that we uh, first created. And make sure you check all these X, Y, Z position, pivot point, pivot point, and just hit OK. And then do the same thing for the, uh, I don't know what they call it, the focal point. And just go ahead and align this to the uh, camera's focal point as well. Hit OK. 
now we can go ahead and delete the original camera and if you hit see here you can actually see what the camera is looking so that, that, that's just a trick to you know really give your camera you know a better position because if you go ahead and do this manually it might just take a lot longer than you know, it actually deserves so I'm just gonna hit M to bring up my material editor and on a new material slot I'm gonna create a new V-Ray material and leaving it at, at the default setting I'm just gonna uh, you know lighten the diffuse something like this and just gonna hit OK and then go ahead and apply this to our stage and I'm also going to change the color to black. It's just a way I like to work with. Not necessary. Okay. Um, <coughs> so the scene setup is done. This is, this is the you know the general method of working with your DC, you know scene. And this studio will pre pretty much work on every model that you do, and will really look good. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit render here. Uh, oh, actually, before we do that, I'm just going to create some lights because the VR physical camera will not render anything out without VR lights. So inside of my create panel, I'm going to go into lights. And V-Ray, and I'm going to choose V-Ray Light. Now, on the left viewport, I'm just going to create a light somewhat of the size of the, you know, the layer of chamfer box. And I'm going to right click to end the creation mode. And uh, using the top viewport, you can hit F3 for a wireframe. I'm just going to move this out somewhere here. Okay, just go ahead and, you know, somewhere here. And inside of Modify, make sure you check Invisible. Okay. And for the color here, by default, it's going to be white, completely white. And you know, you could work with that, but you know, to give it kind of like the edge, I like to change the color to something warmer. So, like a really, really light orange. So I'm just going to go to orangeishes here, somewhere here. Give it a really light orange color. No, not not that light. Okay, something like that. Hit OK. And you know, that might just be too much for this. Because you know you 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 don't realize it right now, but when you you know create a lot of lights and then you realize it. I'm also going to change the selection filter from all to light, so we can easily select these lights. And then I'm just going to hold down shift and rotate this, uh, you know, 180 degrees. Okay. I'm just going to create a copy. Make sure it's a copy, not an instance. Just hit copy, hit OK, and we're going to be moving this out somewhere here. You know, you want to roughly position them on the same. Uh, distance from the actual model. So that's my model and roughly the same position doesn't really matter. Also I'm going to change the color of this from uh, you know oranges to a light bluish and you know that's that's too blue for me I guess. Hit OK. And the reason we're doing this is because now when we render this out this side is going to be kind of like an orangish color on this light coming from this side and a bluish light coming from that side and really you know looks really cool. Uh, it doesn't help the uh, you know the realism that much but it really looks cool. Uh, also, I'm going to select this light, holding down shift, I'm going to drag it here I'm going to create one last copy, hit OK. And I'm just going to rotate it by 90 degrees over here. And using the left viewport, I'm just going to move it up. And I'm going to turn off angle snap snap. And just go ahead and position this somewhere like this. Okay. Something like this. And that's not facing the model as you see. This, this is the model, and it's facing the actual wall opposite to the model. And what that will do is, first thing, increase the render times considerably. Second thing, it will you know illuminate the entire scene a lot more better. So, really looks cool. Also, I'm gonna change the color from this bluish color to really really white. And, you know, it's not completely white, but just a bit of blue to it. Okay, that's that's what we want. Okay, now I think the lighting setup is done. At the these three lights are all I use for all, almost all of my renders, except the car render that you, see, that you saw in, in the beginning of the video. I might just show you that in a different video. Anyways, time for the render settings. So I'm just gonna hit F10. Oh, not F10. Actually, I actually stopped my recording. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit render setup. Okay, so render setup is probably gonna be, uh, you know, done, uh, because you know I rendered this iMac probably before. So first thing you wanna do is go inside of Common and you know change the output size to whatever you want. I usually you uh, know render it out in HDTV format. 1280 by 720 would be pretty good for me. But really does matter on your choice. Also, make sure you assign render as V-Ray ADV here. I've said that as default, but yours might be default scanline render. So you just want to click and select for V-Ray render, and then you're going to save as default if you use V-Ray all the time. Because I use V-Ray all the time, I don't use any other you know rendering engine. Anyways, when I go inside of my V-Ray tab, and under global switches, make sure you uncheck filter maps here, and that's going to really you know. Uh, uh, speed up the rendering process. Not not too much, but you know, pretty much. 
Also, I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck hidden lights from here, from under lighting. Okay, moving down, you want to select adaptive subdivision as your V-ray anti-aliasing filter. You might uh, switch this on, you might you might not. If you, you know, you're doing like a um, render from far off, you might switch this off. And But for this, uh, you know, scene, or rather for this shot, I must, you know, change this from area to capital long. And this really, uh, you know, makes this render look cool. Also, this is going to be pretty much untouched, adaptive subdivision image sampler. Also, I'm going to go to Vivian Environment and I'm click on GI Environment and we make it white, completely white. And leave the multiplier at 1, that's pretty much okay. Under color mapping, I'm going to go from type uh, linear multiplier, that's the default, to exponential. And make sure all this is 1, 1, 1. And pretty cool. Moving on to the most important tab, which is the indirect illumination. That's really going to add a touch of realism to our scene. I'm going to click that to on. And under contrast, I'm going to change that from 1, this is a default, to 0 0.5. And that's really going to help us, you know, um, uh, you know, give it some kind of a contrast to it. You could also turn on ambient occlusion. Uh, really gives it, it a lot more depth. But the way I like to do it is, if, if it's a still render, I like to, uh, you know, add an ambient occlusion map under render elements. Now, I mean, you can't render element like this, but, you know, like an overall override material and then do a anti-aliasing pass. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I'm in the occlusion pass. I don't really like to do it this way, but you can if you want to. For the GA engine, I'm going to go Irradiance Map and Light Cache. This is the standard setup. Inside of my Irradiance Map, I'm going to change the uh, preset from uh, medium, I guess. That's the default to custom. And for the minimum, minimum rate, negative 3, negative 1 is good. Um, spheres, the spherical uh, subdivision is going to be 60 and interpolation sample is going to be 30. Pretty pretty cool. Uh, moving on to uh, options, I'm going to make sure you check show calculation phase and that's just to help you you know, realize when your render is going off wrong for because if you if you can see while it is working you can pretty much you know see if the render is going wrong or if the entire scene is too bright and all that stuff you can, you can actually pause you know cancel the render before it actually does the entire image and that's going to be cool. Um, I think this is all we need here. Moving on down to the light cache, uh, we can change the to keep the subdivision at 10,000. Um, it's pretty much okay for me. Um, if you're rendering out as at a larger, you know, resolution, for example, 1280 by 720 thousand subdivision seems to suffice for me. But if you're rendering out at a larger re resolution, you could go ahead and change the subdivisions to 2,000 or something like that. For, if you, even for 1920 by 1080, uh, if you're doing it that way, you should you know, do it to 1500, but I'm using 1280 by 720, 7B, 1000. Forgive me for, for talking too fast, but, um, you know, we just have to copy the settings, so, but anyways, I'm going to click show calculation phase in here as well, and this is probably the most important calculation phase, because it helps you overview a render before it actually is done. Moving on, we have a reconstruction parameter, we're going to check pre-filter, and what that will do is basically add, you know, uh, a filter before the light catch and will really you know make your render kind of faster so I'm going to take, take a pre-filter amount I'm going to choose 80 now if you want more detail on your model you can lower down the number to something like 10 and that's going to add more detail but for this particular model I think I'm going to stick with 50 instead of one. for filter it's going to be nearest for default I'm going to change that to none and uh, that I meant pretty much wraps up the render settings now, also, yeah, oh, okay, inside of settings, you want to take the minimum sample of 8, it's going to be the de default. Also, I'm going to change the global subdivision multiplier from 1, which is the default, all the way to 3. And that's going to add, you know, a lot more subdivision into my materials and look pretty cool. Moving on, we have the dynamic memory limit. And that's going to, you know, have 2 gigs of RAM on my computer. So make sure you, you know, uh, take this up. It's going to be 400 megabytes by default. So V-Ray is only going to be using 400 megabytes for rendering processes, and it's going to make your render, you know, kind of slower than your computer is capable of. So you know, if you if you're not doing anything else while while the rendering is going on, which is most probably going to be the case, you could you know go ahead and pump it up to the maximum amount of RAM that you have. Uh, but if you if you're planning on you know browsing the internet and all that stuff, it's probably not a good idea to give it all the RAM for the computer because uh, you know the other tasks that you're doing is going to be pretty you know pretty slow. So I, I usually go ahead and give this a render and you know I don't do anything else on my computer 
this will give it all of my RAM to render. And we will, we will not go past this, you know, uh, uh, you know, a limit. So I'm just gonna click, right click, on the camera, and I'm gonna hit render here, and I'm just gonna wait for the rendering to complete. Okay, so as you can see, the render is done, and it's really looking pretty cool. Um, one more thing you could do to really make it look better is if you go ahead into your uh, settings tab. We lower down the noise threshold from 0.01 to 0.05, and that will really rid you of all the noise that you have here. So yeah, this is uh, this is pretty much it for today for this uh, tutorial. I guess uh, this helped you out. If it did, go ahead and hit the like button down below and subscribe. We've got a ton more videos coming up. Um, in the next video, I'm actually gonna be showing you the render setup and um, the uh, studio setup that I used for the car render that you saw in the in the beginning of the video. So yeah, this is going to be pretty much it. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you liked it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and have a nice day.